G'day world, Chris Hogan coming to you from Burley Head Studio here at Me Media for episode 111 of Get Fact Up. And I have with me guest today, Mike Clark, who is the Queensland State Leader for the Key Person of Influence. And if you haven't heard of the Key Person of Influence, basically you might know of a guy by the name of Dan Priestley, who's an Australian who moved offshore and developed a great program called the Key Person of Influence and wrote several books around it as well. Yep. So... Mike, welcome to the show. Beautiful. Welcome to be here. Thanks for having me, Chris. <laughs> Mate, um, so how did you come to be here in Queensland running Key Person of Influence program? <laughs> Do you want the short story or the yeah. long story? <laughs> well, I mean, well, yeah. No, um, no. I mean, uh, uh, basically, so Dan is the creator of Key Person of Influence. It's a methodology that, that effectively we stumbled across by uh, the, the first sort of six years of my career and our career together, uh, we, we spent a lot of time with people in business who had a shit ton of influence, basically. People, I mean, you mentioned Richard Branson, so we used to put on stage in the UK, uh, people of that caliber and a few levels beneath. And, uh, and then when you spend enough time with people who do business in that sort of capacity, you realize that the way they operate, the way they think, they, um, they, they think differently to a lot of way different business or normal business leaders do, everyday business leaders. So, um, so basically from, you know, I, short story is, was in business with Dan in, here in Australia. We had a, a, my first year of business had pretty rapid success, taking a business from one mil to 11 million turnover. They couldn't sustain the growth. So we found ourselves jumping on a plane, going to the UK and would master the arts of running events, which is, which is how we gave this business so much growth. And then yeah, there were triumphant events. Yeah, it's triumphant events. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And, uh, and so then we found ourselves in the UK, launching a few speakers, promoting people, as I mentioned, who had a lot of influence. Financial crisis hit, our business fell apart. <laughs> and uh, we're given some sage advice by uh, an organization and a guy who's, who's had a huge impact on our business. He just said, listen, you're not building any intellectual property in your business. Until you actually build intellectual property, you'll, be, you'll make some good money you know, promoting other people's stuff through selling events, because we were an events and promotion organization at the time. And he said, until you actually develop your own intellectual property, you'll, that you won't be able to build anything of valuation in your business. And that was a pivotal moment because that was the moment then where Dan sort of consolidated, you know, the, all these observations we'd seen from working with these influential pi business leaders and um, figured out that there's five key pillars that they consistently apply. Um, and he wrote a book about it. And then that, and so the premise was, well, what if we could show everyday business leaders who are struggling to stand out how they could have greater influence by applying these five pillars? And then that was 10 years ago, you know, um, jump forward, you know, we've now had 3,000 people work with us and across eight, con uh, eight cities around the world, four continents, and uh, work with us over a 12-month journey, which we call an accelerator. And uh, it just works, you know, it just, just really works. And I, and I took that as my cue around that time to step away to grow a business that I scaled across Europe. But I reconnected with the guys after, in 2017, after I exited my business, um, the birth of my second daughter was, was very uh, difficult and challenging. Um, thankfully, we made it through it. I'm very grateful for that. Mm. Uh, but it shook me to my core. I'd been away for 12 years living in the UK. And I thought, you know what? Time to come home. I started catching up with Dan a bit more frequently and, um, you know, pitched me ideas. He said, have you seen what we're up to since you stepped away? And I was like, no, I haven't. What's up? And then so I sort of checked in. I was just blown away by the level of commitment that, that we have to just helping people implement. So we basically give away our ideas for free, get mm. people to engage in those ideas. And they go, wow, that resonates. And then we pay for it. You know, and I believe businesses this day and age need to charge for the implementation of the ideas. And so that's what the accelerator is about. And I spoke to a lot of people, like literally hundreds of them before I decided to make that step. And the, the feedback that I got was just exceptional from hundreds of clients. And so I said, well, how about we hatch up a deal? And I licensed the intellectual property to get back involved with the gang and uh, so I moved my family back 14 months ago to uh, to now basically uh, you know license intellectual property for the state of Queensland so I'm working going around Queensland finding <coughs> some world-class business leaders so yeah that's the medium <laughs> story I'd say yeah <laughs> fantastic yeah. Uh, and and what I find fascinating is that th there's a part of the story that I didn't know and you know my perception was that that Dan sort of did a little bit of business here and okay. then and then you know but did a lot of business in the UK ah. and was about to launch his key person of influence book and ran a program in Brisbane that I turned up to so that I met him about 
ah. just before he, he released his first book. Okay. But he was, he was, I guess he was stress testing some of those ideas in his workshops maybe. Well, um, and a- Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, the, uh, the early years of it, I yeah. mean, it, it's, it's, it's sort of... So what we do now is we show people how to turn their ideas and their thinking. And, and, and what I find is that a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs have a lot of influence but it's just poorly packaged mm. it's it's like you know in a one-to-one conversation they can get somebody a prospect who maybe has a perception about what they do or their industry and then when they sit down with this this business leader um they can this business leader is able to have a conversation and share these light bulb moments to get them go whoa hang on i didn't realize it was like that like yeah. i didn't realize the stats on things and yeah. i didn't realize that that was the the problem associated yeah. to it and then as a result of that they can completely shift the mindset mm. of the individual and so that's what thought leadership is effective. That's what influence is, is shifting the mindsets of, of people, almost like changing the radio dial from one station to another. And, uh, and so effectively, the idea around it is that you then need to just package that more intelligently into intellectual property. So the, the way that ideas work, they go from ideas to method, to product, to software, which becomes intellectual property that's highly scalable. And so the, the, in the early stages, just like we did and we show our clients to do, Dan was going out there and saying, well, these are the things that I think, these are the five pillars I think that are the things that people need to apply. He did some personal coaching with a few clients to just uh, get them to do that. And then when we launched in the UK, we had these people stand up on stage and go, yeah, actually, you know, I've applied these five things. They freaking work. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And then we had a lot of uh, highly, um, you know, a lot of very experienced uh, mentors who would also share in that sort of, um, you know, who could also resonate with those five pillars. And that's what I did intuitively. And so the reason I share this is because it's the process and the method, the same thing that a lot of business owners do, that, that they know they're sitting on something valuable, but what we've got to do is we've got to go out there and then basically codify that effectively, codify that, put it into a method, put it into a framework, mm. put it into an infographic, so now it makes a visual sense, and then we need to then go out and basically stress test it and prove that it is the actual thing that does get the result. So yeah. that's the sort of, uh, that's how it all kicked off, and obviously now 10 years into it, we're... Uh, and they've got a, got a lot of case studies behind it. Yeah, so exactly. And, so. and and because I met Dan so long ago, mm. to be honest, uh, I, I believe there's no such thing as an original idea. So, uh, you know, I met Dan. I was influenced by many other people, you know, across the industry. Yep. Um, Marty Wein, Weintraub from AimClear. I don't know if you know him. Um, you know, Simon Sinek, yep. you know. Uh, Seth Godin, like there's so many yeah. authors yep, and, yep. And, and amazing people around the world that have helped influence and shape the methodology that we implement here. Yeah. But people. what I find absolutely awesome and amazing is that um, I've started the KPI program and I, I bel- I've seen, you know, what you guys are doing for me mm. that I've been doing for, for clients for for years. But, nice. but I needed you guys <laughs> to do it for me because... I couldn't do it for myself. It was it was hilarious. Like yeah. I go, I do this stuff for people. Yeah. You know, I help them understand who their client is. I help them understand what their values are. Yeah. But I'll be buggered if I can do it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was and and that was that was part and parcel of the problem. And yeah. and that we hadn't actually really codified. We haven't really codified. We had a methodology, but there was elements missing, and the and the system and the process and the codifying of it. Um, hadn't been properly stress tested. And so thank you for the push, you know, uh, <laughs> several months ago where you said, look, Chris, just get that idea and, and, and get out there and stress test it. And that didn't just come from you. Grant Cardone said that on stage at, at, at Success Resources Australia event as well. Uh-huh. The time from idea to actual implementation or execution needs to be super short because yep. you need to know if it's going to fail or not, yep. and if it, and that time frame, if you keep it nice and short, then essentially you can you can iterate on that 100%. and and Get move feedback. forward. Yeah. Well, expect your first version to be crap. Is <laughs> 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 a, a bit of yeah, a yeah. Uh, just to manage expectations. Well, it's awesome in your own world, right? <laughs> it is. It is. But awesome it, in your own world. Expect the first version and the second even to be crap, and you iterate. But you get take that feedback and go from there. But just touching on a couple of things you mentioned there, mate, is um. There's this phenomenon called proximity bias and that's what we observe is that 
we, as business owners, we, we've got so many ideas and particularly someone who's highly creative like yourself, you'll have so many ideas oh, yeah. where it could be going. Yeah, they stuff. wake me up at 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? And and because you've been sitting on these ideas for so long and sometimes it could be months, sometimes it could be years. It could be some, some, I just worked with a client recently who's been saying, She's literally just gone out of financial planning and she's been wanting, she's exited her business, just joined us. And, uh, you know, has been wanting to get this idea off the ground for like years, but has just been not able to do it yet. So, um, you know, so sometimes these things get so close to us and, they, and there's so many elements to it. Um, so the phenomenon of proximity bias is, is effectively, it's hard to delineate the things that are closest to us, which are the ones that are valuable and which are the ones that are crap. <laughs> True. Basically. True. So, uh, so basically, it's, it's almost like we, we devalue and we underappreciate the things that are closest to us. Like mm. if you just ask most spouses that question, <laughs> mm. it's a phenomenal. You know, your, your, your partner will say, uh, honey, you should be doing this and this. She keeps mentioning these a few times. You're like, yeah, yeah, okay. Then all of a sudden, somebody else says it. And then you go, and then uh. you come back and say, hey, honey, guess what? And she's sitting there going like, mate, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> you know, it's, I think it's hilarious that you brought up that example because it's, <laughs> it's exactly what's happened in my life. <laughs> I, 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 have a, I have a mentor that uh, says a lot of the same stuff as, as my wife and, and <laughs> it took a little bit of time for me to actually recognize that and go, you know what, I'm just going to listen to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're one of the best mentors, right? Yeah. Completely. And, and it's, it's, you're not alone with this. You're mm. not alone. And, and it's one of the things that for a lot of our clients is some of the biggest insights is that they're already sitting on like a huge mountain of value. Mm. And it's just when, so, so I've got a knack and, and our organization has just found this knack of just teasing that out of people effectively so that you can just and, and you know, when I, we, we work with across over 60 different industries. It's not about the industry. It's about the lack of visibility and influence in the industry. And so the, the, the reason why this is so important is that, you know, Pareto's law, 80-20 rule, um, is that uh, like 20% of uh, your clients generate 80% of your revenue, 20% of your clients generate 80% of your frustration. <laughs> and likewise for income distribution inside any industry is that typically the top 20% share in 80% of the spoils, you know, the revenue distribution in any industry. So the goal was to really get into that top 20% and the way we do that is we have to become differentiated and the, w the things that allow us to become differentiated often are the things that are closest to us like your story your philosophy your values your your ideas around this and it's yeah. and it's and it's sometimes it's just having somebody else um, you know, like myself and people and the mentors in our accelerator just going well hang on go back to that tell me that again yeah that that's freaking valuable. Yeah. We need to package that up, yeah. you know? And so it's easier when you get to sort of do that across, yeah. you know, a lot of different biz businesses like we do. So, yeah. Um, no, I still remember, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we sat in, in your office at your, at your house there and, and my disparate thoughts and all of these things really close to me mm. and just being able to like dump it on someone that was, that was strategic and could, could see, you know, I guess similar things to what I can see when I'm talking to other people. Yep. So it, it was like, you were, you were me for, for me, you know, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and, and I, uh, I c there was so much value in that. And, awesome, and, and, and you know, we un uncovered, you know, the values that are closest to me and, 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 yep. and why yep. I do what I do. Yep. And, and it was a, it was a pivotal point yeah, it's awesome. uh, for not only, me personally, mm. but I believe here at Me Media, you know, we've actually really discovered our true why. That's and, awesome. and it's changed, it's actually changed our culture internally. And and we're applying, I guess, what I've learned through that story yep. and codified, you know, what we do here. So our methodology and our, and our why and, and our purpose, uh, you know, for our clients now. And instead, have seen amazing results like only in in several months of of, of changing up our strategy for them yeah. so that's awesome yeah it's, it's been fantastic yeah. well can i just mention something on that mm. because i think this is really key and it's it's what what i'm really passionate about mm. is that what what i've seen um through working with literally thousands tens of thousands of businesses like when we got to the uk uh we we were running events i mean at some stages 16 to 18 events in a week um, like it was just full on. I was living this bubble for about literally about five years. We just eat, sleep, breathe 
workshops, events, programs. Um, we I didn't know any I didn't have any friends over there, so all the clients became friends. So it's just like this bubble of entrepreneurship that just was like wow. intense. Yeah. Um, and so w- what I've seen over the years and what I observe is that uh, a bit of my pet peeve around certain um, ways of certain businesses are marketed around getting people to lean out of their business, almost like, hey, right. jump onto this this funnel system or this you know this uh, you know this 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 tool and technique around sort of just increasing your visibility, um, and the fundamental premise with some of them are, are that, uh, that it's about building a system where you step away from your business. But it's not what I've seen to be true. What I've seen to be true is the business owners that that love what they do, they lean into their business. Mm. You know, they lean in. And don't get me, you don't have to lean in forever. Like you can, I was just hanging out with a guy last night. He's built up a phenomenal business here on the Gold Coast. And now he's got a management team in and he only does one day a week on that side. But he leaned in heavily. He leaned in for like 20 mm. years. Mm. You know, and it was his passion. And the reason I share this is because I think what what I love seeing and, and what I, uh, I love hearing that story, man, because about what you just shared now, because um, a lot of times business owners, they can go through their business and, they, and they've tried lots of different things and they just get a little frustrated, sometimes just, uh, you know, a bit jaded with things. And, and really part of what we're about is just helping business owners to peel back those layers and just to reconnect, like, why are you doing this? Like, mm-hmm. what's the real purpose? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm saying this quite a bit at the moment. I'll create a video on this soon. But um, is that I really uh, I love it when business owners, their, their business becomes an expression of what they want to see in the world. Exactly. You know, and it's, you're not, it's not about leaning in and trying to build a system where you're stepping away from it. It's actually about building a business you want to lean into it further and build that up. And then and eventually in time, once that's really up and humming, you then have executive management teams, place, then you can step back from yeah. it a bit, right? Yeah. But first and foremost, you've got to just lean in and just be, be reconnect to the passion exactly. of why you do what you yeah. do. And, yeah. and it's awesome to hear that like, you're then sort of helping your clients to reconnect with what they're doing. Well, it's not unlike... It's not unlike Simon Sinek's story, which I reheard again just two nights ago. Ah, cool. He actually developed his, you know, start with why, you know, codified, you know, why, how, what. Mm, uh, yep, yep. You know, or why, what, how. <laughs> Sorry, I m- might yep. forget his golden circle. But yep. he actually, that came from a story. Mm. And and so too is has yours, you know, your experience and, and many of the people that you work with. It's all your personal story. Yes. And and that's what we're doing too. We're helping pe- we're taking people on a on a dis- you know, personal discovery journey mm. and and you know, discover your your personal values, yeah. your personal purpose, and then your business just becomes a vehicle for that. Spot on. Because if it absolutely if it can't be a vehicle for that, then you it's being something that you're not exactly you're not, you're not congruent right yeah. it, it's, it's sort of like you're trying to build something like that that is you know i want to i want to have a success or something but i don't really care about it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. that never really works yeah. as a strategy very it don't, there are exceptions to the rule occasionally yeah. right but for majority of people that is not a good approach no. <laughs> i went and bought a you know uh, a subway or a mcdonald's franchise yeah. you know because uh, they make money, but I don't really believe in it. I don't really like yeah. the food's gross, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, m- my reason for being here is is not actually helping people be more, be healthier, you know. Like, yep. I'm just filling their gut while they're yeah. on their way to their <laughs> next, you know, gig, you know, yeah. sort of thing. So, and, and and that's and that's why I think the confusing thing is there are some examples I can I can even think of in my mind where that has worked for certain people, but mm. I think that for majority of people, as a rule of thumb, like a general rule of thumb, it just it doesn't work, it, no. you know, and, and there are some exceptions to it without a doubt. But, but I just think that you're going to have a better reality of the world. Like for me, I, I, I keep coming back to this thing around what's my ideal day? What is my ideal day? What is my ideal week? What is my ideal month? What does my ideal year look mm, like? Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm shaping, mm. you know. So part of like what I'm doing now, my, my thing is business and human potential. And there's you know, entrepreneurship and human potential and yeah. boom, that's me yeah, at my yeah. core. Yeah, right Anyone on. who knows me uh, throughout my life it would say that's true. Yeah. And uh, and so this is an expression of what I'm doing. I lo- I, I often say this, I love my clients. I yeah. love what, what they're doing. And, and I see myself doing this forever. I, you know, maybe not as intense as what I'm doing now, but I see you know, so and I just think that um, a lot of business owners that uh, like your point around um, building a business that isn't something you want to be, you know, seeing in the world is it. There's always tough days in business. That's, Absolutely, that's the thing. Like, if, and if you're doing something where you're not really that passionate about, it ends up becoming something which 
you just you're going to check out when it gets really hard. And so, uh, so whereas if you love it, you're you, you know it's ingrained of who you are. You'll see the tough days through. So, uh, which is you know essential in business. Well, there's a whole. I guess there's a whole uh, story behind that too. You know, mm. when you're when you're in the you're in the hole. Yeah. Um, there's a reason why you're in the hole, and, mm. the, and you've done several things wrong. Yeah. And and, <laughs> and Jim and Jim Carrey actually, and and passion. Yeah. You know, passion actually only gets you so far. Yeah. Without it. Because um, Jim Carrey actually described it really well in in a in a, I think a, a a quote that goes around the internet quite a lot at the moment. He believes depression is absolutely real. Mm. But he also believes that people aren't getting enough sleep. They're not. They don't have their nutrition right. Yeah. Uh, yeah they're not yeah, hydrating yeah, yeah, properly. Yeah. They're not getting enough sunlight. They're not exercising. And so, you know, if you're in a hole, yeah. just look at all of those five things. How many of those five things have you actually done right in the last three days? Yep. Like three days. Seriously, it, you can be impacted yeah. heavily just after the last three. Oh, alcohol. Yeah. You know, what's your alcohol consumption like? Yeah. Uh, are you having enough sex? Yeah. You know, yeah. are you actually you know, like are you actually having enough um, human interaction, right? So I've just added three more. Yeah, yeah. But and your passion, just living your passion too. But, but right? yeah, but I, I'm I'm with you on the passion thing. Yeah. But I think if you don't have these, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, th- these yeah. things, yeah, 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 then effectively you you're not going to be able to function, and you're not going to be able to actually live your purpose. Yeah, hundred percent. And so I had that experience recently where um, a, a pressure cooker situation. I'm so thankful for, very grateful mm. for, but I hated going through it. It's almost living an entire year inside a week. And it was all because basically I had four out of five of those major things all yeah. wrong. Yeah. As if I was going to be able to be passionate and, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, living yeah. my life on purpose if those things were incorrect. Yep. Yeah, yep. But coming back to being so passionate. Could I, could I put an analogy to that? It's almost mm. like having a vehicle if, it's, if you were a car. <laughs> True. It, it's almost like yeah, your yeah. car was uh, driving around with flat tires, <laughs> flat tire, <laughs> uh, oils down to, you know, close to empty. Yeah, you know, nothing the, in the radiator. The <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah. oh, what? what? Yeah. Uh, I'm not feeling so well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. You might want to top some things up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your windscreen's <laughs> fog. <laughs> <laughs> You can't see. Oh, I've got no idea what's wrong. Maybe oh, we've, hit the, we've hit dark. <laughs> uh, the lights don't work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, being passionate. So, what would those personal... You, you said something earlier, and I think mm. it was about, I guess, um, I heard, because I changed what you said, because I do that all the time. Yeah. Um, I heard, you know, sort of human performance optimization or human mm. building human resilience. Yeah. You and I have something very much in common there. Yeah. Um, how did you discover that you were very passionate about that? Uh, g- good question. Great one. Um, over time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, it's one of, those, it's one of those things sort of like, you know, proximity bias. Uh, you know, like when I played uh, my, my football years, my, my, my soccer years, I caught football come from the UK. Cool. You know, obviously, that's, uh, you know, I was always the, the, the motivator, the captain of the team, trying to, team G, you know, G the team up. And, and then a good mate of mine has got a brilliant business around the corner here in Burley. Uh, you know, we would always, when, even when we're in, uh, we lived together in uni and we started studying personal development books. And always I remember I was creating these like mic success systems. <laughs> I haven't thought about this, but I, I actually, when I was in uni, I actually had this little, this desk and I had this little mapped out little system on Monday, I'm going to do this and Tuesday I'm doing that. Here's my goals. And then I started, I got into, um, uh, what was it? Amway, Amway and Network 22 or 21 or something it was called at the True, time. Yeah. And, and that was a great, I was the best, I always say the best decision I made that year was getting in. The second best was getting out. So I, it was, I got complete respect for people who are in the industry who do that. And, uh, but it, it was a real, it, it really just taught me, listen, I'm going to, make anything of myself in this world i got to work at it you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. and so i um you know and i was constantly listening to all the cds and, the, and then back then of cds mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh and i was just trying to apply everything so i was just naturally i think intuitively i was just going down this path of just trying to of self-discovery and then when i met dan and the guys uh, after my, i just got out of university was a um, hr manager for a boat building company and this guy was doing pretty much everything opposite that i was learning of best practice of hr in the in the business and he was doing everything opposite to that i thought okay this guy's got 60 people in his business if this guy can do this surely if i applied best best practices i could do something better so then i i uh, just came across dan uh and glenn carlson who's my counterpart in new south wales and uh and they were these 22 year old kids doing work running a workshop for for adults <laughs> on how to run a successful business and create wealth and i thought the heck <laughs> yeah. what gives these guys the right to do that and so that was my, when i first met dan actually here on a, at an event on the gold coast 
and uh, and then I just intuitively joined you know I just I pitched them for a role I created a role for myself pitched Dan for it so I'm coming to work for you because I was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad and he said you know if you want to become a world-class entrepreneur you got to learn to sell yeah. so I thought great there's my opportunity you know and I literally hit the phone so sometimes 16 hours a day because we're, we're running events in Perth so I'd get up at eight start calling eight in the morning and I'd be finishing up sometimes calling up until nine o'clock in Perth that night so it was just a baptism of fire I thought I was good at sales I realized I was shit <laughs> 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 that's what we talk about you got to spend ten thousand and hours mastering your craft but also yeah. you know do a thousand pitches yeah. till you get it right and anyway long long and short of it is we intuitively when we ran our events the first five six years when we we're promoting speakers and when we went into the uk is we were literally promoting people who we just were passionate about we we're studying their material and we wanted to share them with the world so john d martini was one of the guys that we promoted at the time yeah, right. um roger hamilton wealth dynamics yeah. you know that wealth yep. dynamics system no, was that. was phenomenal uh well that so those are the two speakers we launched into the uk with and then we promoted people like bob proctor um and then we also ran some events with a guy called mike harris who built three billion dollar companies t-mobile was one of them uh and so we just had like we're promoting people who were just who we just thought were awesome. <laughs> so that's what I mean. It's sort of, we intuitively stumbled across this and we were always looking for speakers and that's where the methodology came about because we were looking for people who could stand up and who had a pitch and we even had an email template and this is where the, the constructs of the book came from because we had so many people approaching us saying, can you promote us? And we, Dan and, and, uh, and our team wrote this email saying, well, can you, can you stand up and do a pitch tomorrow? Uh, you know, do you have published content that that's demonstrates the authority on this topic in the in the industry? Do you have a range of products, you know, from CD products on the front end to chunky stuff that we could share in the back end? Do you have a good profile? If I Googled you and checked you out online, we're going to find some great things. And can you bring some partnerships that would leverage your trust at scale? If someone could tick yes to all those boxes, we're like, well, let's talk because potentially we could have done business. You know, one of the guys we were this close to signing a contract with was Tony Robbins, you know, so we're literally, there's a, there's a potential change ahead hands and we were considering whether we should promote him or not and that was around the time where we realized that um, the reason why we didn't do that one it sort of answers the question actually I haven't thought about it like this before uh, is that that was very much very heavy around the personal development angle and we were promoting speakers that were sort of in that light but the, the insight for us was that what we really were passionate about all of us in the team was actually entrepreneurship and moving in that direction more. So, although that was you know exciting for us, I think where we wanted to take the business and where you know Dan and the and uh, Glenn and, and the entire team took it was more down the entrepreneurship angle. And that's where we've been in the last ten years. But I think that's where it's sort of just following your passion early on and just following like intuitively where you're going to take it. Because I was always one of those guys in school where I never. It's not like I went, oh, I'm gonna, I want to be this. I want to be that. You know, I didn't really know my path. That's why I went sort of backpacking as soon as I finished high school. I, I was trying to find myself. Mm, and yeah. I think I just gradually over time of just following the internal needle on my compass, I, you know, fa stumbled across it. And then upon reflection, like I love the Steve Jobs Stanford uh, in you know, um, presentation he gives to st uh, the graduates of Stanford University. And he, there's this great talk. If you just Google Stanford Address by Steve Jobs, um, you'll see this brilliant talk where he talks about, you know, life is about f figuring out, you know, it's uh, the, the where you want to go. And it's hard to connect the dots going forward, but it's easy to connect them going backwards. Mm. And so uh, and so often sometimes you have to, if you're not sure on what you want to do, you just sort of follow your passion and follow your interests of where that takes you. And, uh, you know, and I also surrounded myself with a lot of mentors who were giving me some advice. One of my first mentors just said, work to learn, not to earn. Uh, which is why <laughs> when I pitched the, the sales role, I was earning like, I think uh, my base was a few hundred bucks a week, <laughs> which I spent more in dri driving out to drive to Brizzy every day. <laughs> but I was just literally learning, you know, how to get in there and sell. And yeah. so anyways, and it's upon reflection, looking back, then I went, oh, hang on, these, this is my thing. Now I'm crystal clear, you know, after playing the game for, for so long that this is just what I want to see in the world and help entrepreneurs who can maybe sort of speed up that journey for them. I think I think you're absolutely right, and and that's I th think what's been my pivotal point too, mm. is actually age. You know, mm. um, I follow my compass sim similar to you, and and it wasn't until sort of my fortieth year where uh, you know I had I reflected on my life and and what I was pa and passionate about, yeah, and and went, oh, is this 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 and this, and oh yeah, plenty of mistakes. Of course, I've learned a lot. Uh, a lot, oh, a lot, there's always I've, a shit ton of mistakes I've made I think I've made them all but I know I haven't <laughs> <laughs> um, more lessons to come <laughs> yeah. oh god here we go um, but 
yeah, it's it's you know what am I passionate about? What things have I done right in my life, mm. and and that I have to continue doing or do yep. do more frequently? Who have I surrounded myself with? Mm. What types of people, and and who uh, who should I not surround myself with? Completely. You know, types of people. What are the activities that yep. you know uh, I know that that screw me up? What's the what's the things that I eat or drink that I know that you know totally screw me up and Completely. and so you know I've I've gone plant based several years ago thanks to my sensei's advice yeah uh, I I frequently do martial arts and and because I've discovered that to be super important you know increased my exercise output found that Grant Cardone super hi- high energetic guy you know sixty years old is he you sixty know, sixty I didn't realize man he's jacked wow he is jacked I for sixty sixty yeah, yeah man yeah, yeah. And, and like he's a he's a hot man you know like um <laughs> got, got a bit of bromance going oh, on for sure for sure but he's an alpha dude right and, yeah and what completely. i and it, like but it was what i saw about him was what's why is he so successful and i and this was just from studying him on stage i was two seats back from you mm. know the stage mm. and i was like the energy more energy out the greater the energy out the greater the return on energy and Completely. alphas need that yeah you know and i think a lot of business owners actually need that especially if they are the alpha mm. they have to put out heaps of energy because mm. they get it back yeah so i discovered that too energy equals you know that energy output can be exercise you yep. know and, yep. and you don't have to be talking to people yeah all the time but those things are yeah. really important yeah and um and then things that i have to cut out alcohol forget about it you know like just cannot touch the stuff yeah because it it sends me in reverse you know it's it's dehydrating for one it's a it's a depressant for another yeah um and you know i've discovered through for talking to my clients who are you know supplement retailers g'day todd at sporty's health (laughs) uh you know what my some of my nutrition mistakes are you know Beautiful. so surrounding you and yeah like, geez i need these really need these all of these people in my life and it's yeah. like yeah who's yeah. The, yeah you know i guess who's the what's the round table what's my advisory board actually look like yeah Beautiful. just for me to operate yeah and my you know my wife's essential understand yep. that yeah um mentors you know uh, nutrition yeah. uh, okay i need my co- my training coach and i need my business coach yeah you know i guess there's there, there's just five of the essentials right there yeah absolutely and, and then jim rohn's gone you know you are the average of the five people you hang out with most well 100%. if i can hang out with those people every week yeah, yeah then yeah. i'm on point yeah absolutely. i don't know how we got there but yeah, um yeah. i think it, it was just lots of the things you said resonated yeah 100 well percent. and I, I, you know what you mentioned earlier about you know be really mindful who you choose to spend time with and choose not to choose time with mm. it's it's a it's a conscious choice around I'm things sorry, my sensei wasn't in there six yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and i absolutely think that there's uh, that's what i've done throughout my whole life is consistently I'm just I'm just trying to hack my body I'm trying to hack 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 uh you know for the want of a better overused term you know uh, just like I mentioned before around a health um uh, health sort of program we're doing at the moment I've got a uh, a coach who's advising me Cody McCall if you're on the Gold Coast he's phenomenal um, we're just helping you understand there's 360 different types of body body types and you know knowing your body type it is it is instrumental getting to back to like how do you I know Cody co- yeah he, so Cody so he's, he's the one I'm working with and awesome. he does a phenomenal job of just analyzing like he gets into like measuring your your bone density like your brain circumference the length of your fingers and just like just because of the length of your fingers like there was I was looking at being one body type but because of the size of my knee that completely put me in a different, completely different category. And it was just phenomenal, the level of detail we can now go to, to then understand, like, what your idea was, like, uh, as an example, this is what I'm, I'm a big fan about, uh, sort of, you know, getting into is like daily habits and routines, mm. you know, mm. and and I've, I've tried for many years to get up nice and early and, you know, I've got friends who often laugh at like, if they heard this, they'd be chuckling and going, oh, they're up naturally up at four or five o'clock mm. in the morning mm. and just like, poof, and they're awake. Mm. Man, that has never been me. And, and I've, force myself like literally done it for months to force myself get up five six o'clock and but i'm just dead tired in the morning and and so doing this analysis was really fascinating as we mentioned like when we came in i am um, I've, I've found this routine i don't really feel hungry up until lunchtime so mm. i used to force myself to leave and then i felt uncomfortable about it and and so now i sort of have my shake my wheatgrass in the morning been doing that for about 15 years i've had a liter and a half of that as my as my wake up and uh, don't eat to about you know easily like yesterday i didn't eat until 233 i think it was it was the first time i ate 
and um, and now I'm taking ownership of that because now my body's all about digestion. And so, you know, we're not doing but it comes back to the individual, yeah. doesn't it? And that's what's 100%, the important percent. This 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 is yeah. exactly yeah. it, right? It's, it's Everybody's really saying you have to get up early and you have to this. eat breakfast and you have at this time. Da, da, da. No, no, no. You got to listen to your body. You got to listen. Yeah. And I think it's sort of what we're talking about here overall is about mm. you know, um, just tune into yourself. If yeah. it's not clear for you, understand. Just just listen to your body, but also just take, be proactive. I, I love what you're talking about. Surround yourself with people you want to be surrounded by. Mm. Put yourself in the environment i love the the warren buffett quote which is simple but it's really true 80 percent of success is just showing up um and just put yourself in an environment where others are going to be around where you can stand to meet those type of people so huge huge advocate of all that sort of stuff awesome yeah mike thanks so much for your time yeah uh, it's been a great chat in fact uh we've gone over my usual which but it okay. was so good yeah how do people stay across what it is you're up to and what can we expect Ooh. from you over the next sort of 12 months. So. Ooh, that's an exciting what's one. What's one of the highlights or what's one of the goals that you're... A uh, couple you're things, a couple highlights. Uh, we were only running events in Brisbane when I first came here. Then I expanded us into Gold Coast and then Toowoomba and Sunny Coast and so on and Mackay. And now I'm expanding us to around 11 regions around uh, northern New South Wales. Byron Ballon and nine regions in Queensland. So running events all over Queensland too. So if you want to just check out Key person of influence workshops. You can go find one of the events, come along with my guest to one of those. It's a three hour workshop. Uh, and uh, the other thing I'm, I'm about to be launching is a podcast. Beautiful. Uh, so that'll be coming out soon. If you want to stay in touch, though, just feel free to Google me. Um, just type in Michael Clark, uh, key person of influence, or Michael Clark Dent. You'll come across my LinkedIn profile. Um, and then if you want to get access to a free copy of our book, Key Person of Influence, I'd be happy to send you a copy. You literally just type in Dent dot global forward slash start so dent dot global forward slash start send you a free copy of the book beautiful so, and uh but mate thank you so much for having me here it's been fantastic i love working with you buddy i look yeah. forward to uh seeing you just continue to expand and your influence as you play this game even more and uh thanks for the opportunity i appreciate your time and, and energy too mate so thanks very much for watching guys plenty more coming to you on memedia.com.au and we're sharing across all our socials as well cheers beautiful.